time or the bandwidth or the idea, I can't do this, then just think about when you're creating, a, maybe just start with a flyer, but make it look really nice. Print it on perhaps slightly for heavier page so that it looks just a little bit more classy than your average flyer you get through the front door. And that will will help elevate the marketing a little bit and then elevate what people think of your clinic. Hi and welcome to the Practice Builders podcast with me, Rosie Piercy. I'm a chiropractor, clinic director and practice builder. In every episode, I'm going to bring you the hints, tips and lessons I've learned in building my successful clinic to help you build the practice of your dreams. Hello and welcome to the Practice Builders podcast. I hope that you are well today and that all is good with you. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about in-clinic marketing. So I think we've really had a kind of marketing podcast for a while. We've been talking or I've been talking more about um, strategy and mindset and things like that and communication. So I thought we would focus on a little bit of marketing. And as I said, we're going to talk about in-clinic marketing. So some of the kind of in-clinic marketing things that I've um, spoken about before are things such as newsletters that we send out to patients who are already you know, already know, and perhaps Google reviews, they can be also considered in-clinic marketing because we're marketing to people who've already, or asking people who we already know to do something for us. But this is a, another thing that we do at Total Health. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, Total Health is my multi, multidisciplinary clinic. Um, I have six treatment rooms that I rent out, and then my clinic, Total Chiropractic, sits inside one of those treatment rooms. Um, I set it up like that so that if you were the osteopath at working at Total Health, you wouldn't say you were working at Total Chiropractic, you were working at Total Health. Um, So anyway, that's my clinic. Now, pre-COVID, for those of you who can remember back that far, we used to have a clinic magazine and we'd done three issues of it. Um, We have one back for which we published early 2020 so January 2020 with me writing a little blurb on the front about it being a new decade and a new clinic full of new new yeah new possibilities of lots of wonderful things happening and then of course Covid hit <laughs> so most of those went in the bin but we did keep one for posterity just to show the, the thoughts of the year before before lockdowns but that's what I wanted to talk to you about was a clinic magazine and why we've done one and why I think it can be a really good idea for any clinic to have one. So in the show notes, there will be a link to a P- to the PDF so you can see what I'm talking about. So you may want to pause me now and go and open it up so you can see what I'm talking about, but if not, have a look at that later. So obviously there's lots of ways to, to in clinic to, um, to show what you do. You know, you can have little leaflets, um, little flyers that say about what you do and you can have that for different products and things like that. But the reason we created a magazine was mostly because I have a lot of therapists. So at the moment, I think we had um, 18 therapists working out of the clinic and the NHS as well. Um, And we wanted a way to be able to easily explain what people do and to show what people people do. So we often have people coming in, oh, this is great. Who do you have here? And if we try and list it all off, it gets very confusing and very messy. And people then start asking more questions. So the idea of the clinic magazine was that each therapist has a little page or a little section of a page which says about them, has their bio on it and has a little bit of information. So it's not just a promotion thing. It's a it's a kind of little magazine full of health tips ranging through all the different therapies that we have. So we have quite a lot of different things in the clinic we have. Um, obviously chiropractors, osteopaths, physios, women's health physios. We have um, psychologists. F- um, what else do we have? Ear syringing. I'm probably forgetting other things now. Massage, uh, you know, or lots of different things. So the reason we did it also is because when people are in, in clinic waiting for their appointment, they're kind of a captive audience. Yes, they've got their phones that they can get out and have a look at. But sometimes people are looking for something to, um, to to read. Now, way before COVID, we had other magazines in the clinic, but we decided to take those away. A, because a lot of them were just a bit full of nothing and they're all kind of lifestyle magazines that I didn't necessarily agree with what they were talking about. Not in a huge way, but I didn't feel they were sitting with the values of the clinic. 
but also because if they're there I want them to be looking at stuff that I can con- you know a bit of a, I can control so it's one space where I can say hey look at my clinic stuff look at what's going on here and focus the patient's attention to that because they are kind of a, a captive audience so having information in your clinic that's solely about you and not having anything else is really good we do have slightly down the corridor away from our reception area an area where we display cards and leaflets and flyers for other businesses we have an other businesses area because that's a way of kind of giving back to our patients and to to connection build within the community but in our actual reception area we just have our stuff so it's kind of hooking that captive audience into reading more about what we do Hi, just interrupting the show to ask you a quick question. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by all the things you think you need to do to build a busy, successful clinic? What if I told you there's only three things you need to do to build the practice of your dreams? I call them the three essentials and I've created a workbook that you can download for free to help you work your way through them. Links in the show notes, so get your hands on a copy today. Now back to the show. It's also, it looks quite impressive, so... This current magazine, I think, is our biggest. It's 28 pages long. As I said, I have a lot of therapists. And we have some some technology we want to talk about. So I have my gate scan, my top gate scan machine. Um, We have a swift machine. We have a shockwave machine. We have a laser machine. um, The laser machine is the podiatrists. Um, So we have those things as well that we want to show off to to um, people, you know, patients in our reception area to say, this is what we have, this is what we can treat. So that people who may be coming in to see me may then go and see one of the counsellors or they may go and see the podiatrist or they may go and um, <clears throat> see another therapy because they've seen it in the magazine. So it's a really good way of kind of cross-pollinating between different therapists. And because it's not just an A4 flyer, because it is a beautifully created and designed magazine, then it does look like a very impressive bit of marketing. And so it elevates us a little bit. So rather than having just a little cheap flyer that like McDonald's has, we have a lovely, beautiful magazine, which then sets the tone of where I want the clinic to sit. So the clinic looks beautiful um, and it comes across kind of boutique hotel So we want to have that level of marketing in the clinic as well. So, um, so it, it does kind of match up with that level. Um, So it does look impressive. It's also quite good for um, for for out marketing outside clinic as well because, you know, this this magazine, you know, the downside of it, if you like, is that it doesn't come cheap. Um, And that, you know, if we're going to be a realist about these things, and and you'll know that I always like to be honest and realistic about everything that I talk about. It has taken us months to put together. Now we put it together in house. So you could outsource it and probably it'd be sensible to outsource it, but we don't. Um, A, because I probably don't want to spend the money on outsourcing it. And B, because we didn't have a time limit. We sort of said we wanted it to be out roughly in June. Now that has obviously crept a little bit because it only came out last week. But the way we use it is we use it on Canva. And if you haven't seen Canva before, Canva is an amazing piece of kit that helps you create tons of marketing material from social media posts to magazines to flyers to whatever you want to do. It's really, really cool. Um, so we created it on that. And I say we, but if I'm going to be entirely honest, it's mostly my my clinic ma- manager, Sharon, who has done this and she's done an amazing job. So how it works is is that I scrolled through Canva, found a template I liked, made sure we got the brand colours that we we have, and set up a few pages saying, this is how roughly I want it to look like. And then Sharon has then populated and copied it and and made it all line up and make it look pretty so that each page, as you have a look at a double page, everything lines up nicely, which has taken her ages because it's quite detailed work. Um, but she has done it really very well and it does look very good. Um, and that that process has taken us a while, but also because we've changed our process. So before we were saying we would we were giving each person a page and promoting them as their individual brand, if you like, within our clinic. But what we decided to do this time is decide to make it more about total health. So rather than being, for instance, um, I don't Joe blogs osteopath at Total Health. It's now more osteopathy at Total Health. And we have these people who are osteopaths at Total Health. So women's health at Total Health. And then have the you know the, the menopause clinic and the um 
women's health physio sitting underneath that. So it was a bit more about total health and a bit less about the therapists. Um, which is just a slight change in how we did it before and we're going to see how that works for us because at the end of the day this is you know if we're going to get cold cut business here this is my marketing piece that I have spent time and money and Sharon's time on on creating so although we're putting our therapists in because we want them to be successful and we want them to to hit their business goals they're, they're what they want to get out of their their clinics at the end of the day it's my marketing so I can do it however I like um, which people may like or not like, but at the end of the day, and I have been guilty of this so many times, is trying to please everyone else and try and make everyone else happy, which is fine when they're paying for it, but when you're paying for it, you get to do whatever you like within reason, you know, and everyone comes, everyone looks good in it, and it's all, you know, saying positive things about them because they're all very good clinicians, but it's marketing how we want it to be. So that is the only downside is the time and the cost. I mean, the actual cost of printing the magazine, I think we had... 350 um, printed, 300, 350, I can't remember, and it cost us 300 pounds. So in the grand scheme of marketing, that's not a huge, that's not a huge amount. We did shop around because our, our normal pr printers were much more expensive than that. So we did shop around for a um, ma person who makes magazines only or as their, as their main thing rather than someone who did it as well as something else. But it looks really good and we can use it in many, many ways. And also because we haven't seasoned, you know, set it as a season too much, we will probably keep this magazine going now until the new year. We'll have one, a new one in the new year. Um, but this one we can just reprint and reprint and reprint as we get rid of them. So what do we do with it? Now, this is the important thing with anything, sort of making the most of of, of it is you know we spent months putting this together we spent money on it we spent time on it we don't want it to just sit in our clinic reception it would do well we will get rid of a lot of them and people take them away for themselves and friends and family and what have you but we want to make the most of it so what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what we're going to do with it because then you can then use this either to create your own magazine if you fancy that or even with just flyers or things like that so you make the most of the marketing that you're doing so in our magazine we have um some guest articles from a, my local dentist and from my opticians, both of whom are private. So we they have got an article talking about them. So everyone who takes our magazine away will read those articles and, and learn about those those other um, those other people, those other people's businesses. So our magazine is going to sit in their reception room as well. So that's cross-pollinating between people. If you're going to a private dentist or a private optician, you are likely to perhaps go and have private healthcare somewhere else as well. So that works quite nicely for us. We are also going to send a magazine along with a, a nice little covering letter to every GP manager in, the air, in, our, in our area to say this is what we have, just to let people know we exist. Because the biggest problem we still have is that people don't know that Total Health exists enough. And that's maybe a problem for a lot of people. You have some patients who know who you are, but a lot of people go, we never knew that you were here. And we don't want to be the best kept secret. We want everyone to know we exist. So we're going to send it to all the GP managers. Um, we are also going to, we have a, in the back of it also, we have a recommendations. So this is, this is um, businesses of kind of any sort that myself and Sharon at the moment have, have said we liked. So we have the local climbing wall, we have the pottery painting, we have somewhere I went to make silver clay jewellery. So we're going to send them a copy saying, hey, we put you in our magazine. If you'd like to be in it a bit more next time, let us know. Um, and then we will also send it out to major businesses in the area and to sports clubs and things like that. People we want to build connection with. We've also just put an advert in a um, local golf clubs magazine. And part of us doing that was that our magazines got to go and sit in their clubhouse. You know, we said, we'll do this if you have this. So that's several ways we're making, we're getting this magazine out there. And part of the reason why I think people are happy, will be happy to have it is because it looks good. It doesn't look like a tatty flyer. It looks like a really nice, well put together magazine. Um, we're hoping that there's not any huge, massive spelling mistakes in it or anything like that. We're sure there's going to be one or two, and um, because we we've proofread it and other people have proofread it, but it's it's tricky. These things you can never fully get them perfect, and sometimes you have to just go with done is better than perfect. So if it's ninety five percent where you want it to be, then just say it's done. 
so that you're not continually trying to get that last tiny bit done because it just never gets out it never happens and then all this work that you're doing kind of goes to waste a little bit so just get it on out there and if there's a spelling mistake or a comma in the wrong place you know as long as the things like the phone number and the email address and the website address is is um is is right and people's names are spelt right that is the main thing so yeah make sure just go for done it's better than perfect i use that a lot in most things that i do um because if you have slightly perfectionist qualities then sometimes it will stop you you're kind of getting your own way of getting things done so i hope you found this um episode useful and it's maybe given you a different ideas of what you could do to market your clinic even if you're thinking do you know what a magazine is too much i haven't got the time or the bandwidth or the idea i can't do this then just think about when you're creating, maybe start with a flyer, but make it look really nice. Print it on perhaps slightly, you know, more solid paper, heavier paper, paper, that's what they call it, so that it looks just a little bit more classy than your average flyer you get through the front door. And that will will help elevate the marketing a little bit and then elevate what people think of your clinic. You know, it sounds, it sounds silly, but you can remember, I can't remember what that film's called, where they keep getting their business cards out and showing off what their business card's made of because it's kind of a prestige thing people still do um what's the word i'm trying to find here have opinions and impressions of of a business and of a company by things like the paper they use how things feel so it does it does make a difference even if you're just doing a flyer perhaps go up up a paperweight so that it feels a bit a bit more professional and if you do have a budget then get someone to design it for you um for instance, the I was when we were talking about earlier about having the um, the fly the mag that you add in the golf in the golfing magazine, and I was starting to play with it a little bit. I spent like just ten minutes having a little play, and then they sent across what their graphic designer had um, suggested, and it just like blew mine out of the water. It was just like amazing, and we're like, oh, okay, we'll just go with that. So it may be worth if you're not sure and you need something creative, then just pay some money to get someone to to design something for you. Anyway. Um, if you're hoping you're having a go at anything and you haven't seen Kyle before, the link's in the show notes, as is the link for the clinic magazine that we've done, so you can have a little look at that. And if you have any questions at all, then please do get in touch with me. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not like and subscribe so you don't miss another episode. Look forward to seeing you next time.